Hey guys, and welcome on board the P&O RVU. So in this video, we are going to take you on a tour around the ship. Now she is P&O's newest ship in the fleet, and her name means from the seashore. So a little bit of information about her. So she holds 5,200 passengers. Now that's at normal capacity. She can reach up to 6,000. 200 and something capacities and she did her maiden voyage on the 23rd of December 2022 and she is a very long 344 and a half meters long so there's 5,800 passengers on board this ship so we've got up nice and early so we can try and avoid some of them so that we can show you a good look around the ship while it's nice and quiet and show you what the ship has to offer even though we're doing this intro after we've already started filming the ship so if you're thinking, that's a lot of noise I can hear in the background and kids at five o'clock in the morning. It's a little bit later on now, but let's show you around this beautiful ship and we'll start at deck five. So we will start on deck five. So deck five only has the gym on it. The rest of it is cabins. Deck four is cabins. Uh, deck three is the medical center. We will not be going to there, so we will go five upwards. Just like to quickly point out, it is five past six in the morning, so we did get up very early to do this. So we apologize if we do sound a little bit groggy. We don't want to shout because people will still be in their cabins. Right, okay, so we'll start on deck five at the gym and health club. Now, we won't go in. I will put some clips over now because there will be people in there working but uh, it's got loads of machines, all different kind of weight. It's got the, so it's got the gym and health club, it's got the consultation rooms one and two, it's got an aerobic studio as well. I have seen in here that it does have um, like some spinning bikes as well. So I think they have classes on it throughout the uh, cruise as well. So right, we're in the headline theater now. This is where your main stage productions are every night. So there's typically about three shows a night, but as we always say, check your Horizon magazine not as not just for times but to see what acts are on because that does differ from cruise to cruise but typically you've got like your in-house um, entertainment put on by p o so that tends to be musicals there's been like a take that musical on whilst we've been on board and then you have your outside acts that they do tend to offer obviously change from cruise to cruise but you get things like magicians comedians outside singers also as well you do have to go on your P&O app and book a seat inside the theatre um, if you can't do that because he says it's full you could always turn up maybe five minutes before five ten minutes before the show's due to start and they will let you know if there's been any cancellations or people haven't turned up and they might be able to squeeze you in at the back somewhere yeah because that's happened a couple times we've also done that with the 710 club yes, because like yeah. say, we're having we explain all this in the food videos you have to join virtual queues sometimes and bits like that so you might miss shows that you've booked because you're still in the dining room so there's always a chance you might be able to sneak in near the end yes or oh, we'll say as well that you can bring we have asked you can bring drinks into the theater there is no cup holders so you have to hold them yourself but you can watch a show and have a drink the stage is just being set up at the moment because during the day they do things like talks there's a um, whale woman a whale watching a whale lady, watching lady from on orca. from yeah she's going to talk about the orca whales so there is talks during the day not just in the evening yeah so that was the headliners theater we came back out onto deck six so the bottom exit and we've come to the oasis spartan health club now check your horizon magazine because i know that there's been many times while we've been on board this cruise where they've announced special offers and then everyone's flocked there for all the treatments the voice is going sorry but yeah just make sure you check out your horizon magazine or obviously go to them that is also where you'd book the retreat if that's what you'd like and then as you walk past the uh, oasis spa you've got the white wall galleries so this is uh, obviously an art gallery you can purchase these they've been changing these pictures out throughout the uh, cruise so if anybody's interested in buying any of these pieces of artwork you can come to this desk here and they do offer no percent finance so maybe go and speak to them about a, a nice little art purchase if you'd like right so next up we've got the limelight club so this is normally a paid for extra where they'll have a couple of special guests 
performers. Whilst we've been on board, I think it's been Chesney Hawks and Joe McAldry, but obviously that differs from cruise to cruise. Um, but I think you, you pay to see them perform and then you also get a meal in here. Now when that show is finished, this does open up late at night for like, I think it's just kind of like a disco in there. Possibly karaoke I might have seen, but it is open to non-paying guests after they've performed. They also have the odd like talk or maybe kind of yes, gallery auction kind of things in here as well. Yeah, because as Kev just showed you, through all the paintings are there, so they tend to have a talk about the paintings in here as well during the daytime. So we are now in the grand atrium, so we're still on deck six here. So straight in front is the amber lounge. This is a bar, does different um, kind of cocktails. Each bar in and around the ship might do its own different kind of cocktails. I know there's a gym bar, we'll show you after. So always check the menus if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Then next up we've got Vista's Cafe Bar. So this is where you can come and get your Costa coffees uh, if you've got the drinks package or not. They also have a, a little selection of different pastries. They are paid for, but they do look quite nice. They look very different. There's a lot of seating in here. You can come in here in the day and in the night. You don't have to just come in here and buy a Costa or an alcoholic beverage. You can sit here even if you don't want to just read the book or watch the the sea go by. Over there we've got the Swashki, Swatsky? I'm gonna say this wrong, Swashki shop. If you're interested in any crystals, it's a place for you to go. Over in the other corner, this is one of our, our favorite places on the ship. This is the 710 Club. This is Gary Barlow's musical director of this little um, venue. So it's a very small, intimate kind of music venue. They've got different acts on the, a lot of the time they have the same four guys on like a little jazzy house band, funky band. They might have, you know, the odd one different throughout the cruise as well, so keep your eye on that. You've got a little stage over here with a piano on. They do have a mu musician on throughout the day and sometimes through the night. But because we've been on a uh, Mediterranean cruise, they've had a Spanish guitar player and a flamenco dancer on. They've been really good and they've been giving lessons throughout the day for guitar and uh, castanets and stuff like that. So just a nice place to come and watch that as well. And I did forget to mention they've got the staircase as well. So they've got one on each of the, uh, the decks inside the atrium. So if you want those photos on Golanite or any other special occasion, you can still get them on here. Right, okay, so also on deck six, you've got Mission Control. This is like a paid for simulator kind of doodad. It's got two different missions on there. Now, uh, it, I think it's up to 10 people, and I think it's, I'm not sure if it needs to be almost 10 people to do it. So just beware, it won't probably just be you on there. It's £20 for adults and I can't remember what it is for children so I'll put that on the screen once we find that out. So yeah, it's a nice little thing to have but 10 people's quite a lot if there's only two of you and uh, might need all 10 people for actually complete it. Okay, so next after the atrium you've got Anderson's Bar. This is their kind of, well, whilst we're on the cruise, it's kind of the gin bar. The menu in here has got a vast amount of gins on it. They do have their own distillery. We've not seen it actually going on our two week cruise, unfortunately. So uh, that's something to keep an eye out in your Horizons magazine about that. It's a nice little area here. You can come in here and again in the day, or you can come in at night. It does get very busy at night. So also in Anderson's bar is where the book swap shelf is. So I'm guessing if you brought your own books, maybe and you wanna swap them out for somebody else's that they've swapped up previously as well you can come here and do that they also do have a couple of board games that you can uh, take out and use now i can't guarantee all the pieces will be there so if they aren't don't moan at us so across from anderson bars you've now got the ocean studios which is the onboard cinemas there is three screens just to my left there is an example of the films that are showing today obviously check your horizon magazine because they're going to be different when you're on board we'll show you further down in a minute but another tip as well that is on gala evening we showed you celebration night we showed you in the atrium that you can have professional photos done on the stairs but also check out this area because there is a photographer here and then just roughly where i'm standing here maybe a bit further back he takes nice photographs here and he's just got like that old 
Hollywood feel to it, movie feel to it, so it takes some nice photos when you're all dressed up nice. A little bit different than just maybe the stairs. Yeah, so each little screen has got its own little uh, telly outside of it, which shows you all the seats. So obviously right now, because it's about six o'clock, there's no uh, showings. So all the seats are showing dark blue, so they're all available. If somebody goes and sits in there, they, that seat then becomes gray. So it's a good little uh, system that they've got there. The nice little uh, cinemas inside, you know, obviously as you can see by the screen, they are very small. They've got that nice old, like Stacey said, old kind of Hollywoody cinema style to them. They're very nice. They seem very comfortable as well. Right, so next to the cinema, this is Sixth Street Diner. This has replaced one of the main dining rooms compared to the Iona because they are sister ships. Very similar layout. So this is an American diner style restaurant. It kind of still is main dining room. You, you got breakfast and a brunch menu and a dinner menu. We have done a video on this, showing you all of the different meals and menus. So if you want to go and watch that one, that'll be in the playlist somewhere. Just after that, this is Olive Grove. This has replaced the one of the other main dining rooms compared to the Iona. Now I know Iona does have an Olive Grove. It's different than this. So this is another Mediterranean eatery like that one is, but this one is all included. There's no paid for extras compared to the one on the Iona. We have done another video on this just to explain it all. So if you're interested in that one, that will be somewhere in a playlist. And then just past Olive Grove, this is the Meridian restaurant. This is one of your two main dining rooms. So as you can see here, there's two different sections. My table is ready. I want to join the queue. So. We won't go through that. We have done a whole video on the main dining room explaining all the different ways to book and how to eat. <laughs> I think everybody knows how to eat, Kev. But yeah, there's another video on that. So now we're in the Zenith just to show you whilst we're in here. So it's, you know, exactly the same MDR kind of setup as the Meridian, but it's the deck up. So we're on deck seven now. You've got great views. If you can get down here, look at these views here. Absolutely stunning. Stacy loves these uh, wake views here. So there's the Meridian down there. So it's literally one huge open dining room on two levels basically. But you do get some lovely views. Everybody always tries to get these uh, window views. So if you desperately want one of these, you probably have to get here early, probably half five, maybe quarter to six at a push for your evening meals. We're now out of the Zenith on deck seven. So we are at the aft of the ship. This is where you come in now and this is kind of your shops. This is your shore experiences over here. So whilst you're on board, if you want to book any shore experiences or you've had any problems, just come here. This is where you can book them. And then next you've got the future cruises section. So if you've had a good time whilst you've been on board, you can come here and book another one. They have different offers whilst you're on board. So keep an eye on that Horizon magazine because they are sometimes giving you extra benefits like cheaper discounts and uh, extra onboard credit. And then just next to the future cruises, you've got your port shop. So obviously it's closed at the moment. As we said, it's very early, but this is where you can come for any kind of P&O merch, your teddies, your t-shirts. They do have toiletries. They've also got some Lego over there. It's very expensive. So keep the kids away from that bit. So then just after that, you've got the watch shop. I can see, see a 11,000 pound Rolex sitting there. So if you've maybe had a win on the casino, or you want to come in when they have one of those offers on where you spend so much and get so much back as a voucher, you get a big voucher with that one, I suppose. Right then, after that, you've got another little jewelry shop. This one's a little bit cheaper than that one. There's no Rolexes in this. Then after that one, you've got a Clifton Fine Jewelry Shop. So the shops are split into two different sections. At the top, where we went to the port shop and came round, you could have also come the other way. This middle section here in between the two lines of shops, they do have different offers on each day during here. The people have been going crazy for bag sales and stuff like that. So. If you're interested in that, just keep an eye on these screens as well. So this tells you all the daily offers. So today they have got Pandora on offer. So uh, that's another point there. Oh, and this is what I was saying to you. This isn't every day, but this is some days. So this is an idea of the kind of offers you could get. So spend a hundred uh, pounds, get 30 off, you know, these kind of offers. So always keep an eye out if you have seen something you like because you could get it cheaper at some point during the cruise. Then you've got a perfume and makeup shop there. This has been very busy as well, but it's got some 
cool like Insta-ish kind of lights there, go with the glow and makeup and uh, stuff I don't understand but there's two shops there selling makeup and uh, perfume so there's plenty to choose from. Then the lastly you do have a clothes shop so maybe you've run out of clothes and you can't be bothered to go to the laundrette there's uh, a clothes shop for you that's <laughs> I've just noticed locked up with a bike lock there we like these pieces of artwork I think there's one on the other side of the shops as well so if, when you get close to it it's all made out of obviously not the big gold bit but it's all made out of little watch parts so look at all those little cogs and gears and just a nice piece of uh, artwork it's kind of 3d they're all kind of individually placed on I'm guessing it's like a fishing line <laughs> it's like a very clear line so as you get further back you don't really see it it's just such a nice piece of artwork and these are not for sale and then after that you've got your reception area so if you've got any queries or you want to pay your bills because I do know you can pay your bills with cash on Pino just come down here and these will sort you out so this is the Arvia's godmother Nicole I always say Nicole Schwarzenegger but it's like Schwarzinger or something so like that busy. she's a very beautiful lady but it's very a bit confusing why she'd be the godmother of a piano ship. Like, has, she, has she ever even heard of him before they asked her to do it? Obviously did it for this. Yeah, because you, you can walk around, I know it sounds silly, but in some of the toilets they've got pictures of people who've worked on here previously or been yeah. other godmothers and there's a picture of Helen Mirren. I understand okay. Helen Mirren, she's British, and on the Britannia it was the it's Queen. The Queen, yeah. She's obviously British and we can't get more British than the Queen. And now it's a Pussycat doll. From America. Just after reception you in the atrium now, you've got the glass house. This is a speciality restaurant. We have done a video on this. This is a very nice restaurant. This is a little bit different than the normal kind of orderings on a restaurant. So maybe check this out. It's uh, located in the middle of the atrium here, right next to the steps and these funky zebra kind of seats. Other than this, there's not really much else in the atrium on deck seven. So there's just a few more seats over there. That's about it. Just after the atrium, we've got the casino and Brodie's. They know what they're doing here. They've put the casino next to the pub. Okay. So if you like a little bit of a flutter, they got some mega jackpot bingo there. Went up to 5,000 pounds. You've also got your table games there and the big, the big multi-line confusing. I say this every time we show all these confusing touchscreen jackpot winning things I don't understand how these work then we're into Brodie's now so this is your English pub so this is where you can come for a, a pint watch a sport they've got quizzes on in here they've got a pool table they've got dart boards so plenty of stuff to do to keep you entertained during your cruise whilst we are on board it currently is Wimbledon so they've got a big w tennis flag up there I don't think that's a Wimbledon flag so that you can come in here and watch the uh, the tennis so the pool is free the balls are just in there all day even though we do know that the queues are a little bit wonky and some are missing tips so uh if you're really into pool you could always bring your own i'm just looking now i'm not sure maybe you have to ask for them because they're sharp but they haven't got the what are they called for darts the throwing things the darts <laughs> Is the it old, the dots? The old pointy things you throw at the board. Is it called, actually called the dots? Yeah, I think it's so. Dots. Dots. Well, they haven't got the dots here. Whether it's because they're sharp, or maybe you have to ask for them behind the bar. Maybe so kids aren't just getting maybe, hold I don't, of it. Maybe you have to scan your club card. Your club card, it's not Tesco. Gosh, you have to scan your cabin so card. I'm like, what are them things called you're throwing darts? <laughs> you're talking about Tesco club cards. <laughs> Just maybe ask them behind the bar. And then, depending on if you come out through the casino or come out through Brodie's just on the other side, this is the second entrance to Headliner. So this is the Deck 7 entrance. We've already shown you in there, so we don't need to go back in there. So we'll just head up to Deck 8 now. Right, so we're on Deck 8 now in the, in the atrium. This is pretty much just a keel and cow, okay? So this is a specialty pay-for restaurant. So this is just a steakhouse here so we're uh, you know there's some nice seating area we'll just point out this little seated area it's hidden not hidden away but it's just a bit quieter here you've got the nice pictures you've got the nice seating there so that's a bit less rowdy and a bit quieter than the uh, 
the main seating area now we haven't actually done a video on this one we did this on the iona and i think it's almost exactly the same but they do do a, a breakfast menu for the keelan cow it's only very small so if you're interested in maybe a little bit of a different breakfast one day you could always come here just on decade just on the outskirts of the keelan cow you've got the promenade shop this is pretty much just like a sweet shop it sells cabbage chocolate very expensive maltesers they're like 10 pound for this little tin. It's ridiculous, really. We've got a pick and mix shop. The kids seem to be going crazy for that. Little tip here for you. Coming towards the end of your cruise, maybe pop in, because they've had some stuff uh, reduced. We brought a 30 pack of Ferrero Rocher. Should have been 15 pounds. We got them for three pounds 75 there. So, little one couple's adventure tip for you. So it does sell popcorn in there as well. And I always look at this every time we walk past. It's like a little prop of a conveyor belt. And it's just selling. Is that a meat popcorn? Yeah, we've, we've had, had that. that. We've had that before, haven't we? Yeah, it just looks cool with the screen on as well. So next up, you've got Ripple's Gelateria. So this is a paid-for ice cream bar. So it's one scoops two thirty-five, two scoops are three pound five, and three scoops are three pound seventy-five. And then there's other extras there. I'm not going to read off. They do do an afternoon gelato tea, which uh, we have seen does look quite nice but it looks expensive for the money they do serve you the cost of coffees here so it's another location to come if you've got that on your drinks package or you want to purchase a cost of coffee just after the gelotery you've got sindhu this is a another specialty restaurant this is a kind of indian one so it's a bit more of a curried vibe in here it's a nice place if you want to mix it up from the kind of curries on the buffet maybe so if you like something it's a bit more tasty than Sindhu might be your kind of vibe. They do have a little, I don't know if it's just a waiting area for Sindhu, but they have got some seats here for if you just want to drink from the bar. So it could be a little bit of a quiet seating area there for you. And then next up after that is the Keys. So obviously, because it's so early, they are serving breakfast. But this is where another eatery, this is like a grab and go kind of venue. So they have a fish and chip shop. They've also got the Asian kitchen there. And then you've got a, like a carvery station there. All three locations together are the Keys. So at the moment, it's currently open for breakfast and then later on it does open for lunch slash dinner or all day dining as they call it it's a few different menu items it's like a nice just quick grab and go done a video on this so if you're interested in that you can go and check out and we show you all the uh, breakfast items and the items available on the night we filmed it and then just around the corner they've got a couple of pastries in the morning grab and go items bit of fruit salad there and then you've got some tea and coffee and juice stations these are included and I think somebody's getting a bit tired, so she needs a, a perk up of a coffee. I know, it's coffee. these early mornings on this cruise to try and film these videos. Oh, so I'm thirsty as well. I, so I really need this coffee. I need a bit of juice as well. They do do decaffeinated as well. I need a actual caffeinated coffee. Right, and then just past the keys around the corner there, you've got Green & Co featuring Mizwana. I did just ask the chef in there, he said Mizwana, so we're going with that. This is your vegetarian and vegan restaurant. It's very nice in there, we haven't actually eaten in there, but um, the Mizwana is a kind of, it is separate if you want it to be, they do do sushi in there, so that's a nice option if you want some fresh made sushi on your board your cruise. Right, so just past the Keys now, we're in the clubhouse. This is a very popular entertainment venue on board the Arvia, so it doesn't require any bookings to come and to watch any of the entertainment here, you just literally turn up, but it does get very busy, and I would say, throughout the day and night there's always constantly really something going on here we've had they've had kids tappy toes um sessions in the morning and then we've had comedians they show you how to do magic tricks in here or magicians have been in here so and then at night time it becomes like a bit of everything really karaoke singing performers on in here i think their in-house band pino's in-house band pulse, pulse. yeah it tends to be near, in here quite a lot. They have some uh, other artists. There's been an artist who was in the Headliners Theatre. She did an Adele tribute act. She's in here tonight. Yeah. So you so get a mixture of different Yeah, acts. like Kev said, this is a good one. If you've missed maybe a performer in the Headline Theatre, just check out your Horizon magazine because they could well possibly be in here one night. Just through the clubhouse, right at the aft of the ship, we are now standing in the Sunset Bar. Without any doubt, this is my absolute favourite part of the ship. We spent many early mornings sat out here because it's nice and quiet there with a coffee and a tea and just, I love watching the wake of the ship. I just absolutely love it, love it out here. When this bar opens about maybe 11 a.m. it starts to get really, really busy out here but it is a lovely part of the ship. Deck 8 is a full wraparound promenade deck. Mm -hmm. 
So if you do like a full lap around the ship, this was where you'd come for that. There is, uh, as you walk around, there's sun lounges, there's uh, seating outside for the keys. Just, uh, just behind my right shoulder and just behind Kev as well, there's also two jacuzzis down here as well. And these Hot are tubs, yeah. quite big ones on this deck. Yeah, They're bigger yeah. than the, the ones upstairs, which we'll show you in a minute, so yeah. If you like a bigger, more spaced out art tub, maybe come here. So that's everything deck eight and below. So decks nine through 15 are just all cabins. So we don't need to show you those. Uh, although we will just point out, they do have laundrettes on. They are very small. Uh, they are included slash free, depends how you want to look at it. You do need to bring your own detergents, uh, unless you just want to wash them in water. So uh, yeah. Your next is on deck 16. So back of the ship now, we're on deck 16. So this is the infinity pool and infinity bar. So as you can see there, there's the infinity pool. Plenty of sun decks, uh, some beds out here. Here's the infinity bar. So this is a kind of, they call it a swim up bar, I think, but it's, you're not gonna have a swim in here, let's put it this way. But you can sit there in the pool on a nice hot day and have a little beverage there to cool yourselves down. We are up very early, so all the beds aren't full. But I can guarantee you by eight o'clock, there will not be any space on any of these sunbeds or any of these chairs here. So unfortunately you do have to get up very early. Now people will ask, this is where you can get your beach towels from or your, your towels, you know, if you've been in the, the hot tubs or anything. So they're all just over there and then that's where you put them in and the used towel part as well. Right, and then next you've got this little grab and go area. Now, whilst we've been on this two week cruise, there's been nothing to grab and go and when we were on the Iona as well there was nothing to grab and go in there so I don't know what it's really there for because they've even lit it up as well whether it's for effect or I don't know but it's always been empty right okay so there's some outdoor seating for the Horizon Buffet just here in between the Infinity Pool and the Horizon Buffet now we will just walk in and show you just quickly here yeah so this is the horizon buffet so we're not going to show you all the way through because we've done an in-depth breakfast lunch and dinner video on that but uh, yeah it's, it's a nice little seating area we do we always like these little paddles over these little oars it always makes us uh, giggle who's going to use that so we will quickly mention this part of the buffet in the day is the buffet and then at night it's the beach house this is another paid for specialty restaurant this section is closed off from the other buffet so don't worry that people won't be coming in here with buffet food it's a uh, tables are done up a little bit differently so it's a nice little kind of caribbean -y mexican paid for specialty so that might be a nice little thing for you to come and do if you're interested in that and as always we have done a video on this one so go and check that one out but okay so then you walk out of the horizon buffet and into the sky dome so this is a indoor pool area. Well, it could be indoor, it could be outdoor. All depends if the roof's retracted or not. So at the moment it's closed, but it, do, it has been open and uh, this does get very busy in here. So yeah, there's a swim pool there, two hot tub jacuzzis in the back. There's plenty of seating area here as well. The Sky Dome does has the Laguna Bar. So, you know, you can get weighted service in here. It also has the Sky Dome Sunday's Gelateria. So you can get some ice cream and some Costa coffees from here as well. This does also have the Taste 360. So this is a grab and go quick service food area. So we'll give you a quick example of the menu. This does change now again. They've been doing pizzas, burgers, They've been doing hot dogs and uh, other little bits. They've had some rotisserie chicken and chips on there from 5 p.m. So come here if you just want a quick griddle grab and go food. It's not the keys, it's a bit, little bit different than that. I will just warn you, like I say, our cruise has been very full. I think there's been 5,800 people on. And this Taste 360, when we've walked through, we've never actually tried it ourselves. The queue has sometimes been by up by them steps there so it does get very very busy here it does also have the crystal bar as well so there is two bars in this sky dome right okay now so deck 17 uh, at the aft of the ship there's two hot tubs at the back one here and one just over there you will not see these empty very often they open at eight o'clock we've been coming up pretty much at eight o'clock and that's the only time we've really been able to get in because they've been full otherwise then just after that you've got a bit of a game area so they have been doing you know shuffleboard games and stuff going on through the day so you've got this area then there's another little game area on the back and then just to the left of these white 
next kind of thing here is uh, two ping pong tables two on deck 17 as well you will find all the kids clubs the reef and all those kind of ones now obviously we don't have kids so we haven't been in there we won't be going in there because that's just a bit weird two people coming in with a camera so this outside bit here is gated off you have to scan to get entrance over there so obviously this is only for kids club guests and workers so this is the most we will be showing you this little outdoor area you can see tvs over there. i can see a giant connect four there so there's all different little activities for the kids to do more seating up here there's a another hot tub here and then you've got the entrance to the sky bar the top section the deck deck 17 section of the sky dome right okay so as you walk in from the entrance we've just come in next to the reef You've got the massive uh, RV deck chair. They always seem to have one of these on a P&O ship, so it's a nice little photo up there for you. So this is the top half of the Sky Dome now. In the evenings, this will be absolutely full because the Sky Dome at night time, they always have some kind of show on. They did have one on here when, so you can imagine this all dark at night. And then they had some drones that come out all lit up. So they have shows on at night. In the daytime, they have movies on the screen so you can swim in the pool and watch a film at the same time. So this place does get very, very busy though. Right, okay, so next on deck 17 is the Ivory Suite. This has never been open while we've been on board. Well, nothing's been going on in there anyway. I think it's more of like a, I think it's like a bit of a wedding chapel. You can maybe get married in there. Or if you've got maybe a business trip on here, there's a bit of a convention going on. They've got a big screen in there. So that could be also what goes on in there. Right, so just to my left now, you've got the Epicurean restaurant. So that is a speciality restaurant where you can have a evening meal in there it's also i think they do an afternoon tea in there but there's a extra charge for that i think that's in the afternoons hence the afternoon tea and then for in the mornings i think it's breakfast for sweet guests but we wouldn't know about that because we rough it in an inside cabin so but if you're a sweet guest i'm pretty sure you have the breakfast in there and then next to the epicurean restaurant you've got your crow's nest bar and lounge so this is probably my second favorite uh, part of the ship because this is right at the front in the daytime just a tip it's so quiet in here we've come up a few times haven't we and had like a game of cards kev's been doing some editing for some videos and then at night time obviously it, it gets it gets a lot more busier at night but you've got some lovely shots here just looking out at the ocean and also at night as well uh, the bar i think it does have a dress code I think especially, does, yeah, yeah. yeah, and also they do have a penis on in here at times, or maybe some of the musicians, so that's something if you do like a bit of a, a more of a lounge with a pianist, this is a better place yeah. in the atrium. That's a good thing to point out, yeah, no dress code in the day, but in the evening there is like trousers, the same applies as in the restaurant's dress code. Right, okay, so we're at the front of deck 18 now, and this is the retreat. This is a paid for adults only area, now this books up really quickly. We did want to try to do this for a day, but it's already booked out for the whole cruise. Uh, at, on the first day, you have to go to the spa to book this, I believe, but it's got a couple of jacuzzis in there. It's got padded sun lounges, and it's just a bit more of a relaxed area with nice views. So if you're interested in that, that is deck 18 at the front of the ship. Right, and then next to the retreat is the beachcomber pool and bar area. This is a adults only area. It does have a little pool. It's not the biggest on board, but it does have these six pod style seating areas dotted around the pool as well. So these are nice little wooden areas you, that you can sit in there. Oh, and if anybody was interested, this pool does have a lift seat into it in and out. So if you are, you know, in a wheelchair disabled or you can't get up and down the steps, this is the pool for you. So from here till pretty much near the other end of the ship, it's just a sun deck. But I will just point out there is a couple more of these uh, glass fronted hot tubs here. So there's two more here. There might be two on the other side as well. So if you wanted some with a higher view, you'd have to come here. But you might have to come here pretty early because, like I say, I think it's gone about half past eight now and there's nobody here. So this is the best time of the day to come in these hot tubs. So Deck 18 does have a little bit of a running track, jogging track, whatever you want to call it. You can see these blue arrows, arrows on the floor there. So this is a track. I do believe we've seen a sign seven laps is a mile so i'm not running on this but maybe if you'd like to this is your running track so near the after the ship on deck 18 there's these two little golf kind of driving t 
net ranges things but one thing we will point out because we did have a little go with this so here's all the clubs and there's only one right-handed club all the rest are left-handed so they didn't really plan that one out very well did they at the aft of the ship on deck 18 this is the panorama pool and bar area so there is another kind of infinity panorama pool there it's not the biggest one there's a couple of uh, showers here as well no hot tubs on this side but there's a lot of uh, sun lounges now this has been filling up really quickly I, we keep saying this and you might think there's loads of seats here but on the uh, other days because we're doing this on the very last morning so i think everybody had a bit of a busy night last night so we're having a little bit of a lie-in today. So just around the corner from the bar, you've got the Altitude Splash Valley. This is just like a little small kids splash area there. So they can just run through and they've got little sprinklers and stuff like that for them there. There's a little bucket up there that will fill up and wet them. So just a nice little area for the little kiddies. So these stairs behind me lead to deck 19. It's a very small deck here at the back of the ship. This is where your Altitude Mini Golf, Altitude Skywalk and the Altitude sports arena are so the mini golf is a free activity um it's open throughout the day and i think it's open till is it 10 o'clock at night then you've got this skywalk this is a paid for activity i think it's currently seven pound fifty for adults and two pound fifty for children uh, check the ages and the heights of your children before booking this you have to book that on uh, your app and then you've got the sports arena it's a minute it's a tiny sports arena you can probably fit about two kids in there playing a little game of football and that's it it's a very small arena so yeah that's deck 19 and there is also a tiny bit of deck 19 it fits about eight sun lounges on in the middle of the ship somewhere so that's all of deck 19 there that is your last and final deck there are no more decks that is it done no more to show so there we have it that's a grand old tour of the p and rva so we hope you've enjoyed coming along we have done a lot of separate videos on the facilities reviews of the food restaurants things like that if you want to check all them out and we will do one big overall review of the ship as well that will come out after this but i will say as well because we got up as we mentioned we got up really early to film this ship tour and it's you know it's quite remarkable to see actually as you're walking around that why you you guys most of you are probably fast asleep in your cabins because you've had a late night there's a lot of work hard work going on around the ship and cleaning it getting things ready to set up the day and you notice it when you when we've been up so early so yeah there is a lot of hard work that goes into it and make making the day ready for us guys i hope you enjoyed the tour let us know have you been on the rv are you planning on coming on the rv let us know in the comments down below and if you have been on it what did you think so yeah as always thank you so much for watching um i think we're probably going to have an hour because this is taking about four hours to film walking around the ship so uh, yeah comment down below don't forget to give us a like and while you're down there you may as well hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel but yeah hope you enjoyed the tour and we'll see you next time guys thanks bye